I was messing around in creative the other day to get used to a new keybind, and I started practicing my 90s. I did the standard three story 90s with a ramp out first, and then I started trying out some infinite 90s. First, I did no jump 90s to reset the jump fatigue, but then I decided to try out infinite jumping 90s. I'd seen these before in edit course speedruns, and I initially saw the technique used in a Reddit post by user Dylan Crazy. As I was doing them, I started thinking a bit about why this technique is able to reset jump fatigue in the first place. Now, obviously, the reason this works is that on the jump where you normally have jump fatigue, you wait just long enough for it to reset. I was a little bit more curious on the details though, and so I did a quick Google search, but wasn't able to find any information on how jump fatigue worked on a granular level. So I decided to do a little bit of research myself. First, I recorded a quick clip of myself doing a single jump. Then I went into my video editor and counted the frames that I was in the air. For reference, I counted from the first frame my environment shifted to the first frame before my environment stopped shifting. I ended up with about 53 frames. Since my recording was done at 60 frames per second, that meant that my jump was approximately 833 milliseconds long. To test this, I created a simple macro for one of my mouse buttons that would trigger space once every 883 milliseconds. Then I went into the game and held down the button to see if I would get frame perfect-ish jumps immediately out of a full jump. Sure enough, the macro worked. I then used this footage to find the duration of the first jump fatigue jump using a similar method as before, and got about 45 frames or approximately 750 milliseconds. I created another macro that would now jump four times. First two full jumps, followed by the jump fatigue jump, followed by one more jump. And once again, I tested this in-game to make sure that the last jump was tight enough to trigger jump fatigue, but late enough to actually cause my character to jump. Now it was time to figure out how long I would have to wait before resetting jump fatigue. I updated the wait duration before my fourth jump in my macro, and then performed some loose binary searching of values and landed on adding about 250 milliseconds of wait to reset jump fatigue. I did a final test in game just to be sure, and as expected, jump fatigue was reset after the third jump. I repeated this process for the second jump fatigue jump, which is noticeably shorter than the first jump. The jump was about 38 frames long, or approximately 633 milliseconds. After updating my macro to now support five jumps, and testing to make sure I triggered full jump fatigue like before, I tried adding the same amount of weight as before, 250 milliseconds. Upon testing, however, my jumps were still fatigued. I then repeated the binary searching process and landed on about 350 milliseconds of weight. After a final test in game, I was able to confirm that jump fatigue would reset. So at this point, we know that after the first jump fatigue jump, you must wait 250 milliseconds to reset jump fatigue. After the second, you must wait 350 milliseconds. What's interesting here is that the amount of time you have to wait seems to increase. However, when you factor in the duration of each jump, you actually get roughly similar times. 750 milliseconds plus 250 milliseconds and 633 milliseconds plus 350 milliseconds are both roughly 1000 milliseconds or one second. Seems like a trend. I did one last test with the third jump fatigue jump, and the trend continued. The jump was about 32 frames, or approximately 633 milliseconds. The reset wait time was about 450 milliseconds. In sum, the total reset time was again about a second. Conclusion? Jump fatigue resets about one second after you initially begin jumping. Up until this point, I have tested jump fatigue from a clean slate each test, to verify that my timing always holds true, even after coming out of previous jumps, I updated my macro to repeat when held. If jump fatigue still reset in the same way, even after going straight into a new set of jumps with no extra wait time, then it would be reasonable to assume that resetting effectively gave you a clean slate each time and is all or nothing. I tested this in-game of course, and yep. After each reset, the timing was independent of each other. Conclusion, you cannot partially reset jump fatigue. 
If it resets, it fully resets. I know from seeing a post on Reddit by user Bumpa from a while ago that jump fatigue seems to, or at least had previously been, affected by frame rate. To double check this, I simply changed my in-game frame rate from 144 FPS to 60 FPS and tested my macro again. Interestingly enough, this actually had a slight impact on the reset timing. Instead of fully resetting jump fatigue, at 60 FPS, the jump that was supposed to be a full jump ended up being some sort of weird, stuttery, half-jump mess. To try and correct this, I went out on a limb and added a simple 20 milliseconds, which is slightly more than the duration of one frame at 60 frames per second. After testing the macro again, the small correction seemed to do the trick. I decided not to test an uncapped frame rate, because I figured the way my FPS would change while doing so would be too hard to keep track of to find any reasonable patterns or trends. Conclusion: Jump fatigue is kind of affected by FPS. My own theory is that because at lower frame rates time has to be processed in larger chunks, the possibility for a frame where somehow jump fatigue is simultaneously done and not done at the same time is more likely. So, that's it. That's, at least as well as I can observe in about an hour of my time, how jump fatigue works. In summary, jump fatigue begins after jumping twice and starts at the beginning of your second jump. Jump fatigue resets if you wait about one second after the start of your last jump. Jump fatigue either resets in full or doesn't. You cannot partially reset jump fatigue. And finally, FPS has minor effects on jump fatigue although how this works is not entirely known. Thanks for watching.